Now this is a slightly different kind of question. Here we have been given a statement that is certain original causes act for a time at a site and produce a result. So what they are saying here is there is some cause which is acting for some duration on a particular site. Right? And this is going to bring about some result or some change. So we have to identify here that this statement was given by whom and to explain what phenomenon. So if you have a look at all of the options like caries, malocclusion, habits, all of these seem appropriate because caries or uh, malocclusion, they all occur because there is some cause which is acting for a particular duration of time on some site which is producing a result. The result may be caries or malocclusion or the effect of a habit. But this statement was actually given by Dockerell to explain the etiology of malocclusion. So this is what his equation looks like. This is the Dockerell's orthodontic equation for malocclusion. So here he tried to explain how malocclusions occur. So he said malocclusions are actually the results of a particular cause. So there is some cause like uh, hereditary trauma or any developmental cause which is acting at a particular time. This time could again be prenatal, postnatal, the cause could be acting continuously, it could be acting intermittently, right? So there is some cause that is acting at a particular time on some tissue. Now these tissues could again be soft tissues, it could be hard tissues like neuromuscular tissues or teeth and bones. And because they are acting on some particular tissue or a particular site, they are producing a specific result. Now this result could be malfunction. Okay, if it's acting on the soft tissues, malocclusion or osseous dysplasia. Okay, so this is how he tried to explain the occurrence of malocclusion. Now, uh, Moyer's classification of malocclusion was based on Dockerell's etiology of malocclusion. So, he based his classification of the formation of malocclusion on the etiology which was given by Dockerell. Now, Key's etiology of caries and Pinkham's effects of oral habits. Now, Keyes first gave a triad of factors which bring about dental caries. So, according to him, whenever there is a host, that is the tooth, and microflora, that is the microorganisms, which are acting on a substrate, that is plaque, right, or the food source. All these three are required for the formation of dental caries. So, even if one of them is not present, dental caries will not occur. Now, this triad of dental caries was modified into a tetrad to include time as a factor. Because as we are aware, dental caries does not occur spontaneously or overnight. It occurs over a long duration of time. So, this again is an important factor. So, that again was considered for the formation of dental caries. Regarding the Pinkham's trident of habit, he first gave a trident which said that intensity, duration and frequency are the most important uh, factors which are going to bring about changes because of a habit on the dentition or the skeletal structures. Now, intensity depends upon the vigor with which the child is performing a habit, for example, thumb sucking. So, the vigor or the intensity with which he performs the habit. The duration, that is the amount of time that he is going to spend in indulging in this habit. Whether, say for an average, he indulges in this habit, say for 5 minutes at a time, right? So that again is important, how much time he spends and the frequency, that is the number of times he is going to spend in, in the day in order in indulging in this habit. So the duration is 5 minutes, but this 5 minutes can be repeated multiple times throughout the day. So that again is important. Right? So, these are the, some of the important factors. Now, this again was modified into a tetrad by Pinkham where he added the concept of direction. So, like we know in thumb sucking, the placement or the position or the direction of the thumb is also an uh, important factor which is going to bring about the changes in the dentition. For example, whether or not the finger is in contact with the lower incisors will determine whether or not the lower incisors undergo retroclination. Positioning of the uh, finger on the palate will determine the amount of upper incisor proclination. Right? So, the direction is again also an important factor. So, this again is considered into uh, the factors which are going to, or uh, the factors of the habits which are going to bring about the changes in the dentition. So, the tetrad includes intensity, frequency, duration as well as direction.